uh, thanks for hanging out in the Fisher Room, which is, I'm not going to say it's the best, because I'm biased, but I'm also right. <laughs> um, so uh, coming up to talk is um, another alumnus of the very, very first uh, puppet camp before we were calling them puppet comps uh, in San Francisco. Um, and if I was smart, I would have had a slide up or I would have emailed everybody with an Amazon affiliate link to buy his book so I could have gotten some money out of it. <laughs> but I'm not that smart. Um, but longtime Puppet user, hopefully, if, if you don't know him, you should. Uh, James Turnbull. <laughs> you <right? laughs> Almost killed a director of engineering there. Awesome. So um, I'm going to be doing most of the talking, but I'm going to introduce a couple of people along the way, and I'm going to introduce somebody for them, because I think they've, they've probably talked enough, they get a, a break. Um, so um, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, anyone here was actually at the first, other than, uh, other than Deepak, at the first puppet camp? Wow, OK. And, and, and two of the three of those are puppet employees now. So that now, sorry, I should put my hand up. For the, so three of the four of us are puppet employees. Um, uh, Paul Lathrop is the other one, and, uh, and he, he was, uh, he was uh, I think, one of the 68-odd people that was at the um, San Francisco State University, which uh, we discovered was a lot further out of the city than we thought. Um, uh, and I remember I arrived with Luke very, uh, very early in the morning, and, and this is, I think this is probably at this stage one of the, the, the larger events Luke had spoken at, and he's, uh, he was a tad nervous. And those of you who, who know Luke um, know that that's a pretty rare occurrence, or at least he's pretty good at hiding it. Um, comes across as self-confident and cocky and uh, uh, an and arrogant pain in the ass too, but, um, but that, that's because my boss, I'm allowed to say that. Um, but uh, he, he was, you know, he was like, you know, I, I think we were genuinely wondering how many people would show up and what, how the event would go. Um, and in the end, you know, 68 people showed up and we were like, wow, the puppet community is awesome. Um, and then, uh, you know, year on year from that, um, you know, last year we had 300 odd people at the conference. Um, this year, I believe we broke 750-ish um, Jose is somewhere around, he probably probably confirmed that, that number, but um, uh, every year I see that I'm, I'm just, I'm completely blown away by the fact that our community keeps growing um, and the fact that it is, it is um, a fairly awesome community as well. I mean, it's a group of people that is uh, actually interested in the product and actually interested in the domain. Um, you know, you go to lots of events uh, where it's sort of a, you know, I guess, uh, let's see what's happening next week, Java One and Oracle World, um, uh, you know, those events are really you know, very vendor-centric, they're very much uh, sort of, I guess, uh, boondoggle might be the, uh, I don't know whether that's an American <laughs> expression. Um, but I mean, you know, if you, your boss, you're like, I would like to go to San Francisco and, and, you know, hang out with some people and drink a few cocktails and stuff like that, and, ah, oh, Java One's on, I'll go to that. Um, and you don't really expect to learn anything. You don't really expect to get much more than a few cocktails and, 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 uh, and, and maybe some t-shirts and some, some cool swag. Um, I find it at, at PuppetConf, I hear people having conversations where they go, yeah, that thing we did with Cassandra, here, yeah, we fucked it up too, um, and here's how we dealt with it. Um, and and that, that means to me the conference actually has genuine, tangible value. Um, and also you get to drink a few cocktails. And, and I mean, operations people love mythology, they love stories, so it's an opportunity to tell all those stories. I, you know, I turn around the corner and somebody's going, yeah, it was four o'clock in the morning and the CEO was like, what the hell is and then uh, so we did this and we did that and the guy go yeah yeah hey, don't you hate that guy he did that and you know you hear those sort of awesome stuff and, and operations people have that sort of somewhat cynical somewhat bitter somewhat twisted sort of bond um, that uh, that allow you know I mean we're sort of a little bit misanthropic and, and it is always impressive to see the fact that this is a community where a lot of those very misanthropic otherwise very misanthropic people actually come together actually have great conversations and communicate. Um, so a little bit about me, um, I, I work at Puppet Labs, um, technical operations, um, I'm not sure how I ended up with that title, but it's basically the customer facing bits of the business. Um, so uh, uh, operations and support and services and education and training and community management, um, which I recently inherited. Um, uh, and we, we're one of those sort of startups where I guess, uh, um, as you'd imagine, we, we've got about 106 people, though, though Andy thinks it's 110. So it was 106 people when I last looked, which was about 48 hours ago, so it could be 110 now. Um, but you know, it's one of those sort of sort of organisations that it grows. And when I first started, I wore I wore all of the hats except sales and engineering. Um, and, and thankfully, I've passed off many hats, and I now have a smaller number of hats, um, which is awesome. Uh, but um, community management is something that I'm obviously very passionate about and have been for a number of years. Um, so I, you know, I was I was keen to keen to uh, quite pleased when I got that back again. Um, I wrote some books, uh, I have a funny accent, I talk really fast, I say this at every event, I talk really fast and occasionally people go, was that Australian guy? 
He sounded really cool, but I have no fucking idea what he said. Um, so uh, if, if you do spot that, put your hand up and go, you know, slow down, slow down, no rush. Um, there is actually kind of a rush, you only got 35 minutes. But, um, uh, and the last bit in there is, uh, I, I'm gonna, I, I've sort of themed some of this talk with a, with a couple of my favorite movies, well, largely one of my favorite movies, um, which ironically is also one of Luke's favorite movies. But um, it, it's not Aliens, um, as much as, uh, as, much as uh, that is one of my, my close favorites. Um, I do think about um, the operations tools world as being a bit like aliens, um, you, know, uh, it, it, you know, and we are kind of the colonial marines, possibly, um, uh, without the massive death toll um, and uh, the inconvenient uh, implantation of um, parasites. But my favourite film of all time is The Princess Bride. Um, and uh, uh, I'm a bit of a soppy romantic. Uh, my wife is like a really hard-nosed person and she's like, we're gonna watch a movie and you're gonna fucking have teary-eyed thing and you're gonna pretend that your eyes are sore. And, uh, and, uh, and she's like, she sits there stoically through all these things and I go, oh, it's just a bit, oh, it's a bit touching. Um, uh, uh, and, but The Princess Bride is one, a film that both my wife and I find quite sort of, you know, it's funny and, it, and it, it's a great story and all that stuff. So I'm gonna try and interpose some sort of moments from The Princess Bride in here. Um, so the rough agenda here, I, I used to work in a big bank, so I love agendas. You know, I, I, I was going to do a Gantt chart, but um, everybody panicked. So um, I, I'm going to settle for the agenda. Um, I'm going to do some introductions to people, and I'm going to let them, them introduce themselves um, and uh, talk a bit about the state of the community. Um, Luke stole some of my metrics, so some of these may be a little bit familiar, um, but I have some other metrics he didn't steal. Um, he told me he wasn't going to steal them. Ah, fucking hell, CEOs can, can never be trusted. Um, I'll talk about some of the initiatives um, that we're going to try and undertake in the next little while. Uh, and I'm talk a little bit about, um, about how you can help the community, how you can get involved. And then I'll open up for questions. And this is your opportunity to say to me, why didn't you fix my bug? Um, and me to tell you, what bug? Um, well, Puppet has no bugs. Um, uh, but it is an opportunity to ask questions about the people who are most heavily involved in, in I guess, the, the community-facing side of Puppet. Um, so um, this is the, uh, some of you may be aware, this is the scene where, where Inigo Montoya says, you know, um, uh, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. Uh, you killed my father, prepare to die. Uh, we're not quite going to go to that stage. I wasn't allowed to bring a sword. Um, so I'm going to introduce first um, Dawn Foster, uh, who's our new community manager. And Dawn's going to talk a bit about herself. And, and she started yesterday, so no being, body being mean. Um, so she may not quite know what she's doing yet. Thank you. I, I am Don Foster, day two as a puppet employee, which is pretty awesome to start at the conference, so I'm pretty psyched about that. Um, I am the new community manager. Um, I have been doing the whole open source community thing for a pretty long time. Most recently, I was the community lead at Intel, and I managed a couple of open source projects there as well, Tizen and Migo, um, Open Fire when I was at Jive Software was another it's an open source XMPP Jabber chat server, so I managed the Ignite real-time community around that, which was pretty fun. And then there are a few others as well. So I have been I have been doing the whole open source thing for a pretty long time. Um, my early career was actually as a sysadmin, so I started as a sysadmin back in '95, which was before we had any really cool tools like what we have now with things like Puppet, which was actually why I was so super excited to get the job at Puppet because um, it's kind of getting back to my roots and it's um, really kick-ass tools. So. I'm pretty excited about that. I've also done a bunch of other stuff, market research, programming, project management. Um, I have a computer science degree and an MBA for whatever that might be worth. Not much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so my first month, here's, here's my plan. So, so month one, uh, you're, you're just not going to see a whole lot. Um, I'm going to spend the time lurking and learning and trying to get the details on exactly what Puppet can do and what it can't and get a better feel for the community. So I'm not going to go out there and hopefully do anything stupid right away. Um, I'm gonna work on getting some, uh, some of our metrics published. So I, historically what Puppet has done is, you know, there's a big conference and we talk about metrics and um, people present them. And then there's no real kind of like a, you know, monthly cadence where we do this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna try to get that started in my first month. I figure that's something I could do without screwing too much up. Um, contact info there, I just got my Puppet email this morning, so I'm, I'm all set. Um, that's where you can find me. So there, there are two things you can do. Um, if there are some things that you think that the Puppet community does really, really well, uh, let me know that so I don't screw it up. Um, if there are some things that you think we don't do well, let me know those too, and I'll see what I can do to fix it. 
Um, you know, and I'm also at the point of escalation. So if you guys have, you know, outstanding pull requests, bugs that nobody's responded to, stuff that is just getting ignored, um, you know, ping me. I can at least find somebody and track them down physically in the office and glare at them until they respond. So that's my plan. Uh, thanks. And, uh, oh, sorry, and this is uh, Andy Parker, who's going to talk a bit about himself, and, and he's, he's relatively new to the organization. How long ago now? I've now been here, I think it's six months. Oh, wow. I started losing track at about four months, so I think it's six months now. Um, right, so yeah, uh, I'm the uh, puppet team lead at the moment, um, hopefully for a while. Uh, that means that I'm kind of the, the contact person for Puppet and Factor, Hira, Standard Lib, all of those things fall under me, but also it's Eric. I'm not, I'm not alone in that. Um, so my background's as a software developer, pretty heavily. Um, I studied computer science at the University of Washington. I, I have a master's degree in software engineering, for whatever that's worth. Uh, <coughs> little <coughs> <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Uh, from, uh, from Germany, so I've actually, I lived outside of the U.S. for a while, uh, and I moved back from London uh, to the United States to live in Portland for working at Puppet. Um, uh, yeah, so a long time ago, I actually wasn't a system, uh, I wasn't a developer, I was a system administrator for a short time when I was a uh, student at the University of Washington, so when I was doing that, I was SSHing into machines and making changes, and after a while, after about three machines, I realized that doesn't work so great. So uh, I, I picked up this thing called CF Engine, and that worked a bit better. Um, and then I moved on, I, I left the system administration, didn't really think about it too much, and then for my master's stuff, I actually wrote a paper on configuration management, and that's what we got, back, got me back into this whole thing. So I, I think that's why they hired me, but I'm not yes. sure. <laughs> I, I believe Luke read his paper, handed it to the rest of us. The only people who understand it were Luke and Nigel and Teo, and the rest of us went, oh, okay, seems really smart. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, ride, I ride my bike a lot, um, so I'm a cyclist. If you want to talk about biking, uh, oh, okay, cool. I <laughs> have a hand up down there. Um, I, I ride my bike. I do uh, long distance touring. So if you want to talk about that, that's probably where you'll find me interesting. If you want to talk about cyclocross, you want to talk to Eric. <laughs> so uh, it seems like uh, cycling is also drawn into this whole thing somehow. Uh, and I will freely admit I am new to open source development. I will misstep a lot. I will hopefully learn. And please tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Um, my background when I worked in London was financial services software. You don't talk about it. <laughs> We weren't allowed to have our code outside of the office. Couldn't even put it on a laptop and take the laptop home. But I'm really interested in meeting people, understanding what you want to have happen, what you want uh, to do, um, how I can help out on that. So please come and talk to me. I'd really love to just actually open up my laptop at some point during the conference today and hack on some code with people, maybe get your uh, pull request merged. So um, my info, yeah, is up there. Andy at Puppet Labs. Uh, I was the first Andrew or Andy, so I got the name. Uh, and I'm Zaphod42 on IRC. So I think that's it. So um, I'm introducing Eric largely because I kind of forgot about this and I should have stuck the slide in and I should have asked Eric to come up and talk about himself, um, but he's going to sit in the audience instead. Um, so some of you may know Eric Sorensen. Um, Eric's joined us uh, two months ago, um, and uh, he's the Puppet platform product owner. So essentially that means that, that those of you who are sort of from a scrummy as agile, while well, the product owner is effectively the product manager, the guy who owns the, the what should we do next, the roadmap piece of it. Um, uh, he helped me with this. He was a sysadmin at a large Cupertino fruit company. I think that means something to some of you. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't, you know, I, I don't really like fruit. Maybe it's something to do with oranges. I don't know. Um, uh, he's a mad keen cyclist. Um, I actually had a line in there about um, uh, being keen on breaking his neck, but um, he tells me cyclocross is really not like that. It just looks like it from the outside. Um, and again, as with Andy, go and talk to him. Um, essentially, the Puppet platform is really crucial to the, to, to the rest of the thing, which things we're doing. Obviously, we have Puppet Enterprise, but Puppet Enterprise is not a fork. It, it is actually open source Puppet, bundled up with some cool additional features. Um, so the platform is really crucial to us, and building that platform and keeping that platform going is, is, is is Eric's job, and Eric's job is to basically go, 
oh, that sounds like a really awesome idea when he, what he means is, my God, what a crazy idea, we're never going to do that feature. Um, but uh, he is also available to talk to about pull requests, tickets, features, um, wild ass ideas, uh, whatever it happens to be. Um, it's his e email address and his IRC there. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, about where we are with the public community. And, and as I said before, this is where, um, where some of these may look a bit familiar because I sent them to somebody out of interest and they stole them. Um, but this was the start-ish of 2011. Um, so we had um, about 3,000 users on the, on the mailing list and about 600 messages a month. And uh, as I said before, um, we are known to be sort of misanthropic people, um, but we are a bunch of remarkably helpful misanthropic people. And with some, you know, obviously we have a little bit of trolling. Um, we are sysadmins. The, the, it's not quite, you know, it's not quite hacker news, but you know, um, most of those 600 messages are actually people, I need help with something, and really helpful people going, here's how you actually do that with Puppet. And uh, Luke mentioned John Bollinger, um, who is uh, one, of the, one of the most prolific, I think I was the next person after Luke as the most prolific poster on the mailing list. Um, and I was really happy to see someone else from the community actually supplant that because it meant I could sleep every now and again. Um, the Puppet IRC channel, had about 400 people in it, um, and those of you who remember might know um, uh, uh, Ari Panar or, or Volcane. Um, though he really doesn't sleep, honestly. I, I'm not sure how he functions. Um, he may, in fact, be a vampire. I, 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 th that's, there's a meme that we should actually do with South African vampires. Um, but um, Ari is obviously on that channel pretty much 24 by 7, a as was I covering sort of the, the, the Australian time zone before I moved over here. Um, and that means that lack. Uh, Luke, who um, actually now has two four-year-olds, probably does get to, well, he doesn't get to sleep because he has two four-year-olds, but um, he d did actually get to, uh, to back some of that off. But we had, you know, 400 odd people is a pretty, it's a pretty, I think we were close to one of the busiest IRC channels back then. Um, and Puppet, we moved to GitHub, we had 200 forks and 400 watches, and we had about 50 mods on the forge, which wasn't all that awesome, um, but, you know, it, it, it was not a bad start. Um, so when I actually went to look at this, um, uh, I think we, you know, we're pretty close to 5,000 members on the mailing list, um, which makes it a, re a reasonably huge Google Groups mailing list. Uh, we've doubled the number of messages in a year. Um, the Puppet IRC channel um, averages about 800 people, and it floats up to about 850, 900 sometimes during peak periods. So you know, breakfast time on the East Coast, you know, we 850, almost 900 people. Uh, significant number of forks um, and watches on, the, on GitHub. And we have over 500 modules on the Forge. Um, I, I'm, I'm obviously a liberal arts major, so I can't work out what the percentage increase there is. Um, you know, I did business maths, but um, uh, that's pretty fucking awesome. And, and that's the result of people in the community um, actually contributing those modules. Um, and uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure whether Ryan Coleman spoke, um, or, but certainly Luke mentioned that we've actually improved some things on the Forge. It's not quite perfect yet, um, but there's a bunch of things that have been added in the last couple of releases um, that are heading on the way to, and I've seen the sort of roadmap there, um, that I think make the Forge potentially kind of an, you know, an awesome tool to use. Um, and I think you know, we've, we've got some, ro some, uh, some road to, to cover with regards to how people actually share modules and work for fork them and work on them as an integrated sort of way. But we're going to start publishing some workflow and some tools that will hopefully make that a bit easier. Um, and we'd really welcome uh, input from the community about you know, how do you actually use, how would you use a tool like the Forge? You know, do you want a private Forge? Do you want a public one? How would you integrate a private and a public one? How would your workflow work? How would you be able to contribute stuff back to make modules on the Forge better? So those are stuff that we're, we're obviously keen to hear. And Ryan Coleman, um, who was around at the conference, um, uh, you know, literally soaks that information up. So I, I said earlier, um, when I looked at the metrics, I was like, you know, this is kind of, you know, I'm not sure I went inconceivable quite, quite that, that hard as, as well as Stevens does there, but um, I, I, was, I was pretty blown away. Um, in fact, uh, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Um, but from my perspective, uh, I'm constantly amazed by, by how impressive the community is and how, by, and how much it is, it is um, you know, sort of, I, I guess, largely organically sort of grown together. Um, uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit, too, about engineering. Um, and this is not necessarily always visible to people. You, know, you can obviously see there's lots of messages on the main list. You can see lots of people on IRC. But it's sometimes hard to see exactly what Puppet Labs has actually done with regards to um, development. And occasionally, uh, we are a little bit hopeless at communicating this stuff. And, and one of the reasons that I'm really pleased to see Dawn um, come on board and Andy has taken over the platform team and that Eric is running product is that um, they actually have a, a part of their job, part of the reason they get paid is to jump up and down and go, look, we did awesome stuff. And Luke goes, oh, I should give you a pay rise. Um, so that having the, the, the right incentives in place um, are, are reasonably important, as all we're familiar with. Um, so uh, you know, I think we should see a bit more of the sort of information that, that like this. So 
and th Andy gathered this data. Um, but 2005, for those of you who remember, um, uh, anyone you, anyone's been in the public community that long, 2005? Maybe one person, maybe, uh, 2000, 2006, anybody 2006? The handful of hands, 2007, 2008, 9, 10, a few more hands, okay, 11, 12, anyone never used Puppet before, I have no idea why you're here. <laughs> awesome, Jamie Wilkinson, star Google employee there. Um, so as you can see, um, you know, I, I, think, I think I probably came involved in like 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. Um, uh, some of those commits of mine, largely emerging code I didn't understand. Awesome stuff. Uh, hire me as a release manager. Um, it's great. Uh, and we, as you can see, things have progressively got more aggressive. And obviously, we, we know 2010, 2011, the huge jump there, the doubling there, is the fact we actually have these people called engineers now who work for us. Um, and the people who cut the code is not just Luke. Um, so that's pretty much doubled the efforts there. Um, and I think we, you'll see as we sort of, ex over the next sort of 12, um, 18 months, um, you'll see a significant number of commits that are, you know, sort of obviously, um, you getting pissed at me, or you were saying, sorry, you were, do you have something? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, I thought you were saying, I think you were about to, I was about to say something bad or something, I don't know. Um, so, uh, this, uh, this slide just covers Puppet, that's correct? That's just Puppet, and uh, so 2012 is, of course, just year to date. Yeah. So, we're at level with 2011, and here's how we know we are. Yeah, so, um, that doesn't include Factor, and Hera, and Dashboard, and all of the other pieces that are, that are in, the, in the Puppet environment. Um, more importantly, um, you can see the ratio of here of contributors to, to commits and uh, uh, is, is somewhat interesting. Obviously, here is, this is, I think, is Luke and, and maybe, I, I think I could probably name the two other people, but, but you know, uh, and there's certainly the six there. There's not, there, was, there was not a lot of people um, who actually contributed code. Um, I think of the 19 there, um, uh, Nigel and uh, Jeff McCune and a couple of others, that's sort of, sort of OSX support and stuff like that. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of people who contributed to the project. Um, this year, obviously, um, we have 99 contributors. Um, we have about 600 people who have signed our co contributor license agreement. Um, and, and, you know, those are people who have c either contributed, like, small patches or documentation or something like that. So um, th there's actually overall over the whole platform of things like Factor as well, there's a significantly larger number of contributors. But that's just Puppet, and I think that's pretty cool. And um, an interesting thing on this is that... Um, you can't see it in this, but if, if you cut this down, into, if you break this out into a histogram of number of commits for contributors, a huge number of people are submitting just one or two uh, commits to us. And that's really useful. That's the stuff that gets the platforms working. That's, uh, yep. We don't have access to all of these platforms and all these versions. And so those single commits are what really keeps it going. Yeah, some of you still use AIX and Solaris. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, which is awesome of you, obviously, but, um, but uh, and it is really useful to us. We actually have, we're about to buy an AX machine. Um, I don't know, it actually hurts me to talk about it. Um, uh, but we have Solaris boxes and stuff like that, but it is, there are obviously combinations of things we don't have, and it's awesome, awesome to see people contribute something to go, I have an InfiniBand that does this, and it's, you know, um, those, that sort of stuff is really cool. Merged last week, fixes for InfiniBand. There you go. Um, that was what reminded me. Um, so what does this all add up to? Um, when we first started, there were 12-ish providers, um, and some of you have seen the, the, the original providers were, were an interesting exercise, um, and a small number of code. Um, and now we're up to you know 140, 1,000 odd lines of code and 116 providers, and that's just core, I think. Um, so that doesn't include the Forge. Um, there's a bunch of types of providers in the Forge. There's a bunch of things on GitHub. Um, I, if I was to make a, I, I tried to make a conservative guess on this, and it's hard to search for, but. Uh, I would say there are probably a, somewhere between 350 and 400 individual things you can manage with Puppet. Um, and that obviously includes things like, um, like you know, F5 load balances and Cisco switches and uh, you name it, somebody has taken a, a go at it. I mean, people even manage Gen 2. Um, uh, so. so what's next for the Puppet community? Um, this, is, this is sort of a fairly high level um, sort of initiatives that we're undertaking. Um, and then the things that we're, you know, I guess we, we haven't quite set the roadmap yet. And, and again, this is one of the reasons we're looking for input is to people say, there is this big gap in the community that you guys in, in Portland have stuck your head in the sand and not seen. We want you to actually tell us that because um, it, it's not necessarily easy to see that. You know, you all know what the echo chamber is like. Some of you live in the valley. Uh -huh. um, so it's sometimes hard for us to see what the community may be, may be obvious to the community that we're missing. I remember when I first started in the community, um, you know, Ari and I used to talk a lot about the things the community didn't have. 
Um, and you know, obviously that stage was very easy for us to see on the outside of things that, you know, oh my God, it would be great if Luke told us about this, or it would be great if we had a mailing list that did this. Um, and these days, obviously, we have some of those things and all my needs are satisfied, but you guys probably have other ones that I don't know about. So please come and talk to Dawn um, about those um, and let us get them sort of going. First one is, um, I was a bit skeptical about this initially until I actually went on to Stack Overflow and discovered how many people ask questions about, about Puppet um, and the fact that um, apparently people don't like mailing lists. Oh, I love my email. I mean, I've got thousands and thousands of them every day and it's awesome. Um, but <laughs> other people apparently are not so enthusiastic. Um, and we are significantly changing user base. You know, some of you are aware our Puppet user customer base is a little bit more corporate um, and uh, they like things like forums. Um, and uh, you know, there's obviously, if you look at things like the VMware forums, they're really active sort of sites and VMware's done a really good job of sort of curating that. So we're gonna put together a, a Q&A site in, in the form of forums. Um, it's, um, I guess it's mostly ready. It's one of those things that, that one of the things our company is, is uh, we're mostly sysadmins. One of the things that we're only just getting really good at is designing things, and that includes making pretty colors work. Um, and some of you met Peter Irby, who's floating around somewhere. Peter did all of the amazing signage and all of the amazing sort of graphical design for things. Um, uh, and since people like Nigel, who's colorblind, and people like me, who and my wife looks at me and goes, you're wearing that? And I'm like, okay. Um, uh, so it, we, we, once we get that sort of design stuff in hand, you know, I think it's gonna be, I think we, you'll see a site that's gonna be pretty awesome, pretty easy to use. Um, and we'd love to see people contributing to that. Um, and we're going to try and make an emphasis really on, you know, uh, curated, practical questions, practical answers, um, you know, a, a, a actually an, a useful tool. Um, and obviously, if we can get Google to index that, then that makes a life a lot easier for everybody in the community because some of the questions that, you know, the newbie question gets answered on, on the list will be Googleable and findable and a little bit more easier than you can sort of trolling through multiple layers of mailing lists. Um, I've sort of talked about this a little bit. Um, we've been heads down building a startup um, and, and the company has grown four times over. Um, uh, I was operating on like four hours sleep, I think, for a, the first six months that I started working here. Um, and and we're sometimes we suck at being communicative. And I'll be really honest, um, people who know me know that I'm very transparent about this stuff. Um, I'm embarrassed by how, how little we interact with the community sometimes. Um, I think we do a pretty good job in some, some regards, but other, other, other cases, when you're in a startup, you can be like completely blinkers on, heads down, going, eh, um, you know, uh, we, we, we're not, we're not, we don't have the bandwidth to deal with this. And that's not fair on you, and it's something that we, we, we want to get better at, and we want to make sure that, that you think about the Puppet community as a place where Puppet Labs is the, the primary sponsor of the open source community, um, and we're here to try and remove the obstacles, to, to, to be the bulldozer that, that gets out of your work, get, gets out of the, get things out of the way, it allows you to have the best possible tool and the best possible products. Um, we are getting better, um, having a, uh, um, we had um, uh, our first, uh, I guess our first two dedicated community managers, Jose Palafax, um, who actually organized this, uh, uh, this event. Um, and uh, those of you who have met Jose um, uh, would be aware of the fact that um, I think Jose, I, I, I was, uh, Jose worked for me originally when he first started at Puppet Labs and I basically threw really hard problems at him and gave him no help whatsoever. Um, and largely teased him about it, and he did an amazing job of building that up. Um, he's done an amazing job of building our events up. Those of you who've been to a Puppet Camp, um, they're, they're, you know, those are incredible one-day events, and this event itself is pretty amazing. Um, and then Mike Stonkey took over that community management role, um, and uh, I think from, from Mike's perspective, he was like, you know, I'm raring, raring to go this, and then we went, yeah, that delivery thing that you're really awesome at, Mike, you know, that packaging stuff and releasing stuff, we're kind of sucking at it. Would you like to... And uh, yeah, we, we managed to, do, some engineering chaps managed to derail him. Um, and as a result, uh, I'm now thankful enough to have, have, uh, have Dawn on board, um, who's gonna be taking the, the, the uh, I'm not very sporty, so the baton, I guess, whatever you have in a relay, the baton from Mike, and hopefully running with it for a considerably lo longer time. Um, but I wanted to particularly thank Mike and Jose, who did an absolutely awesome job. Um, uh, and largely, in either case, largely with, with very limited sort of help from anyone else and the very limited sort of experience being community management. Um, and this is really important. If we're not responsive, if you're not happy with stuff, call us out. I mean, I, I literally, I have no problems being told that, I, that I'm doing the wrong thing. I have no problems being told that, that, uh, that we're not doing the, the, not doing the stuff you want. Um, you know, please become, be honest. I, I, am, I am not going to give you excuses for stuff that, that we, we've fucked up. I will, I will outright tell you that there are, there are things we, mistakes we've made and mistakes will be made. Um, uh, I think you know, the, the th thing for us is that honesty and transparency about that and, and, and making that better and moving forward and fixing that is, is the key thing to us. 
Also, the other reason I, uh, I'm very keen to see Dawn on board is that Dawn loves metrics. Um, she's a little bit crazy like that. Uh, we, well, then again, we're an organization full of people who are a little bit crazy about metrics. But um, uh, for us, there's a few key things behind that. Um, it's kind of cool to understand how many of you are out there and, what, um, and how many of uh, uh, what, you know, who you are, what you want. Uh, gives us an indication of where we should go with the product. Um, we'd really like to know what you want, and we want to be transparent and accountable. So um, talk to us, complain to us, give us feedback we can action, help us out. Um, any, everything that you add to the community to make the community better is something that, that you know, everyone, you know, it's, it's like this, uh, the virtuous circle, um, you know, the, uh, or the golden rule, you know, um, we, we, we want to build this awesome community and what you guys are the, are, the, are the only ways that we can actually sort of get that leverage and do it. So I, I didn't want to finish this without appearing, I mean, obviously we've, uh, I, I've, I've tried to um, be as open as possible about, about what we're doing, but we actually need your help as well. Um, and uh, I, I've stolen the, 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 or paraphrased a quote from a, from a president of my adoptive, recently adoptive country. Those of you who don't know, I, I just recently got a green card, so you're stuck with me for a while longer. Um, but uh, I did want to talk a bit about, um, about what we want from you. And, and some of this stuff is easy and some of this stuff is hard. I, I like to think about this though, the really important thing about this is that Contributing to an open source project, um, adding things to, a, to an open source community, um, it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just uh, personally rewarding, um, but it's actually professionally rewarding. So um, those of you who may know, um, in my previous life before I worked at Puppet Labs, I worked at a bank. Um, I reported to the chief security officer of a bank, and uh, uh, let's just say that wasn't the most rewarding, satisfying job in the world. Um, and uh, I, the only way I stayed sane was spending the other 40 hours of my, uh, the, the spare 40 hours of my 140 hours a week, um, working on Puppet Lab stuff. Um, and strange enough, I actually ended up with a job out of it. Um, and uh, I, I get to talk about cool stuff like Puppet. And um, I think professionally, from my point of view, um, working in open source projects for the last 15 years has significantly changed the way my career has, has gone and significantly made uh, me are much happier and you know a much more you know a much happier about what I do uh, and actually allowed me the opportunity to give something back to a community I really care about which is sort of operations and sysadmin people um, so we need your help there's a bunch of ways we need your help um, and uh, I'm going to quickly step through all of these and the slides will be available and that sort of stuff um, this is really critical and this is something that that we, we've probably not transitioned very well some of you may know we have a wiki it's kind of out of date and it's kind of got a lot of sucky crappy information on it um, if you see Nick Fagelin wandering around, he's our, our lead tech writer. Um, go to, up to Nick and say, James says you should kill the wiki and put that data somewhere useful um, or get rid of all the crap pages. Um, so a big part of doing that is that, that Nick and Fred, our two tech writers, are, are literally our two tech writers. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff in that wiki that would be very easy to go, let me take this page, kill this page off, take the relevant data out and stick it at somewhere in the doc site. That's a really easy process. The doc site is publicly available. It's just a git, git repo. You can check it out. You can make changes. It's all marked down. Put a pull request in, uh, open a ticket, or even better, I said fix a ticket. Um, that is all stuff you guys can do really easily. Um, I think even sort of you know, people who are new to Puppet, um, there are going to be bugs. There are going to be issues. That, 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 no, that, that, sorry, that, the, the Puppet documentation Redmine project has a bunch of tickets that anyone can, can probably, probably fix with a really small amount of knowledge. And the really crucial thing about that is not only do you get to, to be registered as a contributor to the project, but um, you also get to learn probably a bit more about how Puppet works. So I think that's a really easy sort of entry level way you can solve a problem. Um, I know we all have um, uh, documentation and sysadmins has that sort of, you know, uh, everyone goes, <laughs> documentation, yeah, we'll worry about that um, when we uh, have time later on after the project's over. Um, but realistically, um, this makes your life easier, this makes other people's lives easier, and it is a minimal amount of investment of time to actually, to actually get there. Um, the other one that's really minimal too and really easy to get started on is Factor. Factor is a really simple product. I mean, basically all Factor does is it interrogates a bunch of things on your system and returns some key value pairs. And we know it kind of sucks, uh, the fact you can't do rich data and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, and that you can't um, have structured facts. Those are all things that are being worked on and fixed, so Factor, you'll see a bit, bit more out of Factor um, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Factor rewritten in something like C or something like that or Lua or something. I don't know. V things that make it Factor a little bit faster, it is actually you know, almost becoming a bottleneck in some people's environments. But the really important thing about Factor is that all of you operate infrastructure that we don't or don't know about or don't see. Um, so you are the best people equipped to say, I would, oh wow, I really would like to display this particular piece of information about my environment. Uh, I should write a fact. And most facts, literally 10, 15 lines of code. Um, 
not only good Ruby learning experience, but really simple to do um, and very easy to duplicate. You can look at the existing facts and go, I would like this particular piece of information. Uh, it already exists in this fact. Let me tune this a little bit out. Um, and there are lots of platforms w w where, you know, um, Solaris and AX are good examples where we would love to have people contribute far more factor facts. Um, and new platforms that come along, you know, all of the Open India and all that sort of stuff. Um, modules. Um, yeah, so there's the word module A, B, and C there. Yeah, that, that's called preparation. Um, uh, so um, uh, share and publish your modules. Um, as I said earlier, we haven't quite got the workflow right. I'll freely admit that. Um, I think we need to get the workflow right. Um, the w best way to get the workflow right is bury us in modules, so we have to actually solve the problem for you. Um, and uh, I'm a firm believer in making my, other people's lives miserable in order to solve problems. Um, I think that's happens to a lot of operations people, is that, you know, that, that sort of learning experience is, you know, this is a really big problem, a really big pain point. We should solve it. Um, and the way to do that um, is, is to develop and contribute some more modules. Um, there were some module bounties recently. I think Chris is here somewhere. Uh, Chris won one of the module bounties for your React. Was it React module? No, I won Graphite. Graphite. Work with Logstash. Yeah, Graphite and Logstash. Um, uh, what did you win? I don't know. You don't know what you won? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell you what, we suck at this communication thing, don't we? Um, <laughs> but. There is actually a bounty. I believe it actually involves winning something. I'll, I'll find out what it is. Right. I mean, if not, I'll buy you a beer. Uh, I, I, you know, maybe an Amstel. You know. um, uh, it wins James being embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but there will be more of these module bounties, um, and there are particular areas that we're obviously particularly keenly interested. Ryan Coleman has a complete, full and complete control of that. Um, you can go and bug him. And he will replace module A, B, and C with, this is what we'd like to see. Um, have a look at our blog, um, that's where usually these are mostly published, and we also have a module of the week. Um, so if you have a really cool module you've written, um, reach out to us and say, you know, I, I would like to write about this really cool module. Um, Michelle Carroll, who runs sort of our, most of our blogging stuff, spends a lot of her time running around the office going, write something for me, you bastards. So if there are other people out there who write something for us, um, that would make her life considerably easier, and she's a very nice person, you want to make her happy. Um, so code and testing is the last area I want to talk about. Um, so this is something that, that is a bit, was a bit scary to me when I first started. Um, those of you who've met Leek, Luke, um, uh, he's kind of a little bit frighteningly smart. And uh, he was like, you can just tackle that bug and fix that. And I was like, <laughs> I've never seen Ruby Line and Ruby before in my life. Um, and uh, I, I was really intimidated. I was like, how do I do this? How do I get involved in this? Um, and I reckon I write pretty crap code. And, and a number of the engineers point at the bits that I, I contributed to Puppet and go, oh my god, we merged that? Um, uh, they also do that to Luke too, so I don't feel so bad. But um, uh, this is a really, this is actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, I, I very quickly discovered there are there are some bits of Puppet that are like a total mystery to me still. Um, I'm not a CS major, um, like things like you know things like graphing libraries and stuff like that, and complex algorithms. So I can't even balance my checkbook most weeks. Um, so those sort of things are, are difficult. But there's lots of bits of Puppet like types and providers, uh, like functions, like things on the edges, and all the many extension points. Those of you who know me, um. I've written like 18 report processes because I clearly have something congenitally OCD wrong with me. Um, but uh, they're very easy to write. As extension points are easy to sort of integrate with. Um, and they're a really easy way to pick up you know, a little bit about, about Ruby and to learn how to, how to contribute stuff. We also have a bunch of bugs and features. Um, and they keep coming in, um, adding your Dart input to that, particularly things like, I've seen this bug. I've seen it on this platform. This is how you replicate it. Um, we get a lot of tickets that are, there is a bug, and it looks like this. And I'm like. OK, what version is that? And the person never comes back. But if someone else sees it and they can provide it with sort of re re reproducible sort of information, um, you know, you've probably all seen the um, who, who, uh, ESB's um, you know, how to write a good ticket, you know, all of that sort of stuff. That's a really valuable sort of input to us. And just saying, I want this feature, that's a really valuable input too. That allows us to structure. Um, and some of you probably went to Eric's Puppet 3.0 talk. A significant number of the bugs fixed in that release were because people had voted for them. Uh, or watch them on, on, in the Redmine environment, because so we actually know people actually care about this stuff. Um, write code, write tests. Um, that's a, a really hard part. Um, all of the engineers who in the platform team have basically volunteered to say, we will help you do this. We will help provide, you know, the tests are the hardest part to write. We will provide some input. You want to drag one of these guys into YIC and go, can I get half an hour of your time? Write some help me write some tests. And test releases. Uh, it's really important to us we get as much possible feedback as we can on each release. Uh, I can do that. Yes, you bloody well can. Um, if I could do it, and, and literally, I have a liberal arts degree. Some of you actually went to actual proper schools and started computer science. And if, if, if I could actually do this, the rest of you can. It's, and it's a really good investment in terms of time and effort. Um, on the topic of that, um, a bit later on this afternoon, um, 
getting started with contributing to Puppet Effecto, I probably stuffed that title up there somewhere. So Haley, Tesco, and Ruth, who are somewhere in the audience here, are giving that talk in meeting room one at 1.15 p.m. Uh, that's a really good way to get introduced to them. They were interns in our, in our summer intern program um, and got, I think probably got dropped in the deep end. Some, some engineers said, went over there, fix a bug. Um, so they're going to give you a, a little bit of an insight into, into how to get started. I, I, I strongly recommend you go if you are interested in that. Um, I think it'll be a really valuable session. Um, and that's all I have to say, really. Uh, I think I'm heading towards the end of my time. I was uh, remarkably surprised I managed to fit that in. But anyone have questions? No, they're going to have to come and find you later. Oh, are we done? Yep. We were done five minutes ago. Oh. Come grab us after.